Welcome everyone to Fix It Fair at Home. Thank you for joining us. I'm Wing, one of the coordinators of the Fix It Fair, City of Portland, Oregon Community Resource Events. Uh, before we get started, workshop attendees can ho hover over your screen and you'll see a Q&A button. Press that and you'll get a pop-up box where you can ask questions and we'll make sure they get answered. We are also broadcasting on Facebook Live. So if you're watching on Facebook, while we're live, you can leave a comment and we'll see it and we'll make sure that gets answered too. And with that, I'd like to welcome our friends from Civic Life. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, today, we have a presentation about social isolation from social isolation to social connections, taking care of yourself um, and your neighbors. Um, my name is Stacy Vu, and I'm a community safety coordinator in East Portland uh, with the City of Portland Office of Community and Civic Life um, Community Safety Program. And I've been with the program for about three years. I'll let Mary introduce herself before I provide a short description of our program services. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Mary Tompkins. I'm also the community safety coordinator for East Portland. I've been with the Office of Community and Civic Life for 14 years, and thank you all for being here today. In our um, community safety program, we have three geographical teams, um, Central, North, and East. Mary and I work on the East team with another colleague, um, and his name is Steve Witcherly. We provide training and education. Um, our Neighbors Together trainings uh, support communities to meet your neighbors, build connections, and collaborate to create safety solutions. We provide a variety of trainings that include personal safety trainings and workshops, prevention topics, public safety resources, pedestrian safety, implicit bias, um, emergency preparedness, and how to work with youth to address safety. We also provide free safety and security assessments uh, called crime prevention through environmental design. And we use a multidisciplinary approach that relies upon a set of strategies uh, to reduce unsafe behaviors. Some examples are looking at lighting, um, access control, gathering areas, structure, and landscaping. Before we get started, I wanted to go over some acknowledge acknowledgements about social isolation. So by default, we are all more isolated than we were before COVID-19. We probably all have experienced it at some point and especially during the last nine months. We all have different life experiences of social isolation and how it affects us. And we wanna honor that in this training. So you may be attending the training because you're feeling isolated and this training is a way to break that isolation. We also wanna recognize that this is an incredibly difficult time right now. There's lots of fear, unknowns, um, and people also uh, may be experiencing various levels of trauma. We wanna let you know that there is hope. And as trainers, uh, we are not mental health professionals, but we will be talking about how to connect you with mental health resources and some of this training has been informed um, by our Bureau's mental health specialists. We also value diverse perspectives where everyone has meaningful access to services and resources. Even though we are the trainers, we appreciate your suggestions and inputs because we learn valuable information um, from you as the community members. So today, today um, our goals for the training is to define and understand social isolation. Social isolation impacts our most vulnerable communities, um, such as seniors, people with disabilities, people who are immunocompromised, um, recovering from substance abuse disorders, and people with limited English proficiency. So we wanna help participants increase their awareness of social isolation, loneliness, and the services and resources that are available and help participants build community connections with each other, understand more about community safety and emergency preparedness. And we'll also go over um, key takeaways. What can you do starting today to empower neighbors to address issues in their community? Social isolation is defined um, as lack of contact with others where people experience a lack of companionship and support. Human beings are social creatures and our connection to others enables us to survive and thrive. 
many of us, as we age, we are alone more often than when we were um, when we were younger. And due to other life situations, this can leave us vulnerable to social isolation and loneliness. Research has linked social isolation and loneliness um, to higher risks for a variety of physical and mental conditions that may include high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, a weakened immune system, anxiety, depression, um, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's disease, and even death. Fortunately, there are ways to counteract these negative effects. People who engage in meaningful, productive activities with others tend to live longer, boost their mood, and have a sense of purpose. These activities seem to help people maintain their well being and may improve cognitive function. Um, so, we have a question for everyone How are you staying connected with your community right now? And um, you can put your answers in the chat. Social isolation can affect all of us. Um, age does not matter. And it is essential to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. Um, everyone's physical and mental well-being is important. Um, and for me, I find myself doing more meditation. So there's lots of videos on YouTube that range from a few minutes um, to 30 minutes. And recently I bought, um, when this pandemic started, I bought meditation cards um, for my children. My youngest tends to get frustrated easily. And um, to start off our day, we practice deep breathing and we do a mountain pose where they're both able to blow away all of their frustrations um, and it goes down this mountain. So that's been really helpful. And there's lots of options for self-care um, and you can do uh, whatever makes you happy. So the deep breathing, um, set the menu, um, to see which uh, shows or what things you wanna watch and read. Treat yourself. Um, that may be like a milkshake, um, taking a bath, taking a long walk, um, having a social media detox and uh, exercising or getting um, hydrated, drinking your favorite beverage and embracing the light. Another important aspect is caring for others. So caring for others um, is a voluntary choice of yours. It's important to decide uh, what you're comfortable doing and then commit. So I'm wondering if, if you have, um, is there a neighbor whom you think may be isolate, isolated and vulnerable? Do you have a neighbor that you wanna check in on um, that is an older adult, uh, has a chronic health condition? immunocompromised, has a disability, or doesn't speak English? And then also, do you have their number um, or a way to contact uh, that person? Perhaps give them a call, text, or video chat? And if not, can you drop off a note to talk to them um, through a window or a door? There's different ways to connect um, to people right now. So you can connect through social media. Um, many folks are using Nextdoor, Facebook groups. Um, Zoom, uh, church phone trees, to identify vulnerable neighbors. And you can also host a virtual training for your neighborhood uh, with our community safety program. Recognize the digital divide. Most of the country is in lockdown and people are relying on the internet for important information, work, health, um, education, and entertainment. So many people don't have access to the internet especially people who are experiencing poverty and have limited financial resources. Others may lack um, the skills to use technology. So there are ways that you can help. So you can connect with people um, and let them know about free or low cost internet services. Perhaps you have an extra laptop, um, tablet or other device that you can let someone borrow or offer to train someone on how to use technology um, or video conferencing programs. And pay attention. There are ways to be observant. Um, is the grass overgrown, cars not moved, mail or packages um, that are not picked up? And just ask, don't be afraid of rejections. Uh, the worst case, you might feel bad, um, but the best case is that you get to help someone. And we uh, recently worked with um, 
uh, a woman that lives in an apartment complex that has um, 60 units in East Portland. And a lot of people right now are experiencing uh, food insecurity. So um, she was able to coordinate um, different farmers in the area and bring uh, food boxes um, to her apartment complex. And then she also, uh, when there are people who are not able or don't have transportation to go to the grocery store or get their medication, um, she goes and does that for them. So there's different ways that you can help people. Uh, there's an assessment with American Associations of Retired Persons, um, AARP. Um, and it's a self-assessment if you're concerned about yourself or others um, to see if you are uh, experiencing social isolation. Um, that's in this link right here. And then, <laughs> and then next I'll turn it over um, to Mary to talk about our community safety program a little bit more and the training that we offer. So thank you so much, Stacy. So our Neighbors Together program is actually very popular. We've been working more holistically and inclusively, and we're working to help build connections with each other and to help prevent and combat social isolations. We offer trainings throughout Portland for anybody who lives in Portland and Multnomah County. Trainings can also focus on increasing community preparedness and resiliency. We currently are working in, in collaboration with other uh, Portland City bureaus, such as Portland Bureau of Transportation, Oregon Department of Transportation, SOLVE, which is a litter pickup program, and other programs that invite communities to work together in a more holistic way. We worked with a home forward property called Ellington Apartments, where we were able to implement a lot of these bureaus in terms of helping to address safety by bringing together PBOT, ODOT, working with youth, working with tenants, and bringing people together in a holistic way, we were able to host and facilitate the Neighbors Together training. By doing this, this is helping um, tenants and community members feel a lot more safe in their communities. Um, one of the things that we did when we worked with uh, working with families and communities out in East Portland is what to do in an emergency. We were working with uh, training people on how to use implicit bias when to call 911 and other interpretation services. When calling 911, just make sure that it's a life or death situation and just be really clear on who, what, and where is involved in the 911 call. You can also text 911 as well. Different times of texting 911 would be one, if you're on public transportation and you're witnessing a very dangerous situation and you don't feel safe taking out your phone to call 911, you can text 911. Also, if you're in a situation where you are in a home and you feel like there's an intruder in your home and you're afraid to use your phone, that's also a great time to to text 911. Also reporting hate and bias incidents. Uh, we work in partnership with Portland United Against Hate, and that is a good um, avenue and resource for reporting hate and bias incidents. We also do a training on personal safety, which emphasizes the three-step model of assertiveness. Also addressing concerns about physical distancing and protocols, our personal safety um, training will go over ways to keep yourself safe in the community, also while observing COVID-19 restrictions. When talking about the prevent and the spread of COVID-19, again, we know that these restrictions have been in place for nine months. We have also been teleworking ourselves and so we just wanna again emphasize washing your hands, wearing a face mask when you go out in public, avoid touching your, your face, cover your coughs and sneezes, stay at least six feet from people who you do not live with, 
clean and disinfect surfaces, limit trips and stay close to home. As we continue to move towards vaccines and more proactive ways of preventing the spread of COVID-19, we just ask people to just be aware of their surroundings, stay home and be safe. As we look at um, as we as we look at um, the way COVID nineteen has has um, limited our movements in the community, we were able to get some of these um, shopping hours with some of the grocery stores in the Portland metro area. These shopping hours were designated specifically for people that have disabilities, elderly people, people that are pregnant and folks that just feel vulnerable shopping in the community. These hours, again, are just specifically for those folks in the community, and this just allows people to be able to get out of their house and be able to shop um, without much stress or lots of folks in the store that might, you know, put them at risk of being vulnerable. So again, these are some of the days and hours that um, have been designated as times for people with vulnerabilities to be able to go shopping. Additional resources that we know that's out there for you and others, in terms of dealing with food insecurities, the Oregon Food Bank, again, is a free, a free food resource near you. There's the Sunshine, the Sunshine Division out in East Portland. You can go online and click request a food box. Um, there's SNAP benefits, Lift Urban Portland Food Pantries out in North Portland, meals for kids, um, resources for older adults, adult, practice, adult protective services for abuse reporting. If you know of a person that's vulnerable or you have a family member that you feel that's vulnerable and not being seen after or looked after, that's a number that you can call just to um, let them know that there might be a, a vulnerable or elderly person in a the home. There's the Hollywood Senior Center, and they're very active. Although they are closed due to COVID-19, they are still working virtually and allowing seniors to come in and, and do workshops and yoga and stretching and walking. There's Helping Hands for Seniors, Aging and Disability, Store to door where folks go out and shop for people who are unable to get out on their own. Meals on Wheels, both for the elder and for children. Uh, AARP Social Connections and TriMet Lift grocery, grocery Pickup Service. We also know that for some folks that are since the pandemic and that are dealing with a lot of social isolation, like Stacy had mentioned earlier, there's housing resources. Um, you can dial 211 if you are trying to get housing resources. We also know that the Multnomah County and City of Portland eviction moratorium is in effect. Um, that's the, the, um, the link that you can contact to get more information about that. Um, there's lots of mental health resources. We have the Multnomah County Mental, mental Health Crisis Line, Safe and Strong Help Line. Also, there's a Senior Loneliness, not loneliness Line as well, and the Oregon Warm Line. We also have peer-run counseling solutions, Suicide Lifeline, uh, Military Help Line, Youth Line, alcohol and drug helpline, and a disaster distress helpline. All these resources are there for the community to help you deal with social isolation and or reach out to your neighbors if you know of someone that's socially isolated and that are suffering and are unable to get out of their home. What can you do today? Who are the three people you need to contact for well-being and to ask for help? Who are the three people you will contact after this training to check in on and offer help? Who are three people you will tell about this training? 
Again, we just want to emphasize that um, community safety and civic life, that we're doing our best to reach out to people through our Neighbors Together training. And we ask that if you want to, to get that training, to just contact either one of our teams, either East, our East Portland Community Safety Team, our North Portland Community Safety Team, our Central Team. We've been very busy since we've been on lockdown and teleworking from home, still facilitating these meetings virtually. We're able to reach all communities and work with people that want to be helped and to support communities to become healthy, safe communities. Again, we would just like to say thank you guys for attending today. And we hope that this was a very helpful presentation. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending our training. Um, does anyone have any questions? This is Wing with the Fix Affair. I'm not seeing any questions come in through Q&A or social media right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> um, so if we did uh, wanna wrap up, uh, Stacy and Mary, does that sound good to you? Yes. <clears throat> Great, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, the Fix It Fair uh, workshops are all recorded and uh, we will be um, moving this one to our YouTube library for future reference and um, make sure you visit the Fix It Fair online to see even more community resources like this one. <laughs> Mary and Stacy, thank you again for joining today with this valuable information. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having us. Yes, talk soon. All right. Bye.